I think we're going to show a little bit different way of uh, how do you use big data to get to that story? Do you get to understanding people? And how do you reveal in a way that is actually truthful? Because in a world with questions, we know you don't always get the right answer. So the objectives of the study were really to understand the target beyond the uh, numbers of a typical segmentation. So this is a segmentation story. And we want to bring it to life in a powerful and creative way to act as a springboard for creative development. The approach that we did, we used, and, and Rini will take you a little bit more into it, because I know you're researchers and you really want to know the methodology, but is to dig into the cus our target customers' lives to see how they really live how they feel, how they relate to each other, what are the relationships, what they speak and relate, all through what they leave behind, their artifacts. It's a bit of an archaeological dig that we kind of went on. So I said, this is a segmentation story. So we started with the traditional segment definition. We did our usual latent class cluster analysis, heterogeneity, homogeneity, et cetera, et cetera. And we used attributes, category, behaviors, and attitudes, all important, critical stuff. And you get a big, long spreadsheet. We had a three-segment solution that worked pretty well that we felt we could target behaviorally. Um, and again, it has attributes and demographics, all necessary information. Maybe not quite so inspiring, but all necessary. So we started there, but we said, hey, is that enough? Rini, is that enough? No. No. <laughs> so we went to the next level. And I'm sure many in this room have done this as well. Uh, we went to the next level to try and, OK, how can we take that spreadsheet list of attributes and category behaviors and attitudes, and how do you bring them to life? So we developed some personas. Bring it down to the level of the individual. Give them a name. Personify. And again, lifestyles, how they like to engage with the category. And here's Frank, the archetypical segment one for us, a very important target for us. And we had information about him, about me, how old he is, whether he has kids and wife. And we know a little bit about his attitudes. He's meticulous and relatively risk adverse. To give a context for understanding, you know, he has a, a house in Naperville, Illinois. He's a homeowner. How he likes to engage with us give me the best coverage, be local, be there for me, uh, his decision-making style. So this actually does help. It starts elevating, OK, I'm starting to get who this person is. Um, but oops, is it completely enough? We said, could we go deeper? Could we find out about the emotional drivers? Keith Reinhardt talked about this. Can we get into their values? and emotions of Frank to understand him better, to use it for creating a more powerful and engaging creative brief. And that's where we partnered with BrainJuicer to use a new tool that they had out there called DigiVigils, which is intended to use big data to help bring that story to life. Oh, here we go. Thanks. Is it the green button? Yeah, green button. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a bit competitive. Sean wore one flower, and well, <laughs> you, you, you get it. I hate to see what the next person comes out in. Um, so Digivigual, so Bob and his team at Allstate had tons of information and tons of great information, right? Um, but there is something missing in that information. They know a lot about sort of what they're doing, a little bit about why they're doing, but not a lot about why, and nothing about sort of how they're feeling about it, right? Emotions drive story, they drive decision making. Uh, you know, we're very system one and, and behavioral change at uh, Brain Juicer as well. So we put our digivigils uh, into play here for Bob. And digivigils are digital characters programmed to listen to. Listen to, watch, hear anything, right? That you write online, that you read, that you post, that you buy, that you review. Anything that you leave on the, in the digital world as an artifact for us to find, we gather it. We gather it and bring it back in order to build this very rich, very real human picture 
of the target, right, their lives. And then, right, we come in, and this is where our gut comes in, this is where our bat crack as researchers, you know, <laughs> to find that inspiration, to find those insights and those ideas that spring from how we live our lives, how we feel about it, uh, and then what we do with those feelings. So this is what Frank would have looked like. This is actually Robert. I can't show Frank, but this is what it, it boils down to. We create an algorithm out of all of the segment data that Bob and his team did, right? 100 or so words, a bunch of emotions, and we program this algorithm, and it's an aggregate of all the Franks in the world, and they come back, and they give us something like this. And you can see here, Robert, at the time, had, what, 1,600 pieces of data? I think Frank ended up with about 3,200 pieces of data. And these data range from Frank checking into the gym to an article that he maybe posted on Facebook uh, to if he was using, I don't think Instagram was even, was Instagram around? No Instagram. <laughs> but something he reviewed or possibly bought on Amazon. And we looked at all of those and started developing themes, right? What are the themes that, are, that abound in his life, right? And what do these themes mean to him, and why do he have these themes? We call them passion points when we're starting to analyze them. And you can see here some of the keywords. Well, you can't, but all the circles are keywords, right? And you can see that they are either links or posts, videos. Um, it's fascinating. It really is fascinating uh, to, to look at their lives this way. And when we come up with Frank, when we showed Frank to, to Bob and his team, uh, we showed them a video about Frank, all created from the pieces of data that we found in Frank's life. We showed some insights. We talked about why he is the way he is. Why is he meticulous? Why is he decision averse? Um, in this case, Frank, one of Frank's themes is he wants to protect his family, his home, and ultimately what he believes is right, because the world is changing, right? And we realize he has a problem with change, right? He grew up uh, in the 50s, sort of the Cold War, lived through Vietnam, lived through sort of two or three economic sort of ups and downs, and we start to understand how all this affects his decision making. Why is he so risk averse? Why doesn't he want to sort of take a leap right, of faith with any brand or company. Um, and we also see some other sort of themes of his. He's introspective, uh, but not introverted, right? He has opinions. Um, he wants a status in his community. He has a feeling that, you know, that gives him a sense of stability uh, and a sense of safety. Um, his children uh, are and sort of tradition and the sense of protectiveness all come into play with him. Again, sort of all leading back to this changing world and what changes, how changes affect him and make him feel. And again, this was just part of the things that, that we were presented, sort of some of his feelings. Um, you know, he, he expects the organization he deals with to be accountable and straight with him, right? Because he doesn't want to deal with the unknown. When he deals with the unknown, <laughs> I drink that water, but it's so thin it's gonna do this, because it's, anyway, I'll just, it'll come all over me, so I just, it's gross, so. Um, and he's really, again, uncomfortable with change. So, when we put all this together, um, and took it to Frank and his team. They knew exactly what they needed to do with it. Um, and as we were told, you know, his, his team told us, you know, it built an intuitive understanding. And they definitely understood their segment one mm -hmm. better than ever, right? So the, clearly this is the results uh, slide. What, what happened? We shared it with our senior leadership, our CMO at the time. Uh, we showed the video. And uh, he wasn't a man of many words. He said, oh. Bob, this is good stuff. I understand this segment better. So that was a high compliment. So uh, uh, then we used it clearly with our integrated marketing communications team, our advertising agency. We used it as to brief them on to get a better in-depth understanding. Now, where we were going with our advertising at that point was pretty much on target. But again, it, you, it enabled us to understand uh, that, that the target, Frank, we used to use straight talk. You have to talk about 
protecting his family. That's a deep-seated emotional value of his that he's it's very important to him. The world is changing, but you also need to think about the future. You can't hide. And he definitely appreciates humor. And, uh, you know, Keith Reinhardt said, hey, what's your brand story? Well, I'd like to end this. Uh, Rini, Rini and I would like to end this by showing you a couple of the uh, uh, executions, creative executions, that came up after we had done the briefing, which I think you'll see uh, exhibits some of, the, some of the key insights that we saw from the Digivigil's work. So if you could roll the two ads, that would be fantastic. Clip for it, maybe? Uh... I'm a raccoon. And this time in your attic has been the best week of my raccoon life. I'm digging, I'm nesting in this fluffy stuff. I've already had like four babies. I'm the smartest raccoon I know. And if you got your home insurance where you got your 15 minute car insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get all state. You could save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like all state agents. What's the matter? Uh, trouble with a car insurance claim. Ah, claim trouble. You should just switch to Allstate and get their new claim satisfaction guarantee. Hey, he's right, man. Only Allstate puts their money where their mouth is. Yep. Claim service so good, it's guaranteed. So I can always count on them. Unlike Randy over there. That's a one dumb dude. The new claim satisfaction guarantee. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Thank you. Thank you.